when we say redemptive event, it is like crucifixion. It's a redemptive event, not a personal experience. It's something that happened because it is part of God's plan of redemption. Then resurrection is a redemptive event. And then ascension, that these are redemptive events. They are once and for all, non-repeatable. Now the same is true with the outpouring of the Spirit. It's a redemptive event, which means it happened in the plan of redemption and will have consequences afterwards, such as the cross. One event, but consequences afterwards will continue. The fruit of the cross continues. The same is with the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The modification is this. In the case of Pentecost, there was a second installment. The first installment, Acts 2, is for the Jews. But there is a second installment for the Gentiles. It was necessary because the Jewish church was so closed-minded as far as Gentiles were concerned that there was a necessity for another Pentecost for the Gentiles, which happened in Acts 10. And I will show, I'm, I'm making, I'm in the process of making a tabular chart now to compare the so-called Pentecost, Acts 2, then Acts 8 of Samaria, Acts 19 of Ephesus, and Acts 10 of Caesarea or the Gentiles. And I will show that the real parallel only are Acts 2 and Acts 10, Jews and Gentiles not Samaria, and not Ephesus. So there was, a, we can say, a two-installment uh, Pentecost, but the uh, Pentecost as such is a redemptive event. Go ahead. Hello, uh, uh, the, the reason I ask, because see, I was uh, reading in nothing reading assignment, uh, Revival, revivalism. Um, yung po bang uh, katulad no, nagkaroon ng Great Awakening, revive, revival during the 1800, can you call that outpouring or how would you classify that with respect to the, yeah, so to the good, work good, of the Holy Spirit? It's a good point. And again, I am going to explain this later. In the case of Pentecost, there are two sides. There's the redemptive event And therefore, once for all, that as I shall argue with two installments for Jews and Gentiles. But there is another aspect of Pentecost, which is not a redemptive event, and that is revival. We will have a lecture on revival. And revival in this case is not once for all, it is repeatable. So Pentecost is also a, a model of revival, but not the phenomena of speaking in tongues, but rather of preaching and conversion and baptism and church life. Those are elements of revival. But the elements of redemptive event are those outpouring of the Spirit resulting in speaking in tongues, repeated only in Caesarea. Uh, from Joan Rolfilipa, I came from a Pentecostal and charismatic background and still within our organization, but with now influence of hypergrace teaching what is the best approach to reform our church well you are pretty messed up with if you have, if you have pentecostal charismatic hypergrace uh, those are all false teachings uh, and you better begin thinking about probably not so much reform uh, because uh, 
I first I know you. You were just Pentecostal and charismatic. Now you're also hyper grace. Eh? Bukan lumalala. Uh, so you may have to think of reform. Reform, probably if not from within, but from outside. Uh, just just saying, uh, hyper grace is wrong from the false teaching of Joseph Prince. And of course, I will show later how the charismatic Pentecostal position on signs and wonders is wrong. Uh, so, sir, good morning. Uh, clarification lang po dun sa in speak, uh, speaking in other tongues. Uh, kapag ka yung uh, binasa po natin yung sa Acts chapter 2, uh, nag-speak sila ng native language nila pero naiintindihan nung nung uh, ibang language speaking dun sa own language nila. Parang ganito po. Nagsalita ako ng Tagalog, naiintindihan nung uh, French sa sa salitang French ganun po. Uh, yun ang nangyari kay Peter, but as we will see there were others who spoke and so the debate here is whether speaking in other tongues means a miracle of the of the speaker being able to speak the language of his hearers as one possibility. Uh, and then while in 1 Corinthians 14, speaking in tongues is speaking in his own language with no miracle hearing. That's why he needs to be translated. But here, the two interpretative take is whether the speaker spoke his language miraculously heard in by the hearers in their different languages or the speaker spoke in the languages of his hearers so it's either a miracle of speaking or a miracle of hearing uh, to understand uh, but we'll come to that when we come to speaking in tongues okay. uh, from erwin david uh, of italy my question pastor is if you have received the holy spirit is it possible now that the Holy Spirit can depart from you like in the Old Testament, not the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because the indwelling is now uh, permanent and one of the words used is sealing of the Holy Spirit. We are sealed forever according to Ephesians, until the day of redemption, according to Ephesians 4.30. But there are certain works of the Spirit that may be withdrawn. His con comforting work, His empowering work his convicting work uh, if we greet the holy spirit there are certain works of the holy spirit either in the church or in the individual christian that can be withdrawn assurance is one uh, one can come to be overwhelmed by doubts because he is not living the way he should or perhaps he is absorbing teachings that are wrong so uh, there are certain works of the Spirit that are withdrawable, but as far as the indwelling and sealing of the Spirit, uh, these are permanent blessings of salvation. Other questions? Let's take a break. <laughs> 